she is in long-term living rehab. Our mission statement and ministry hours are all on the back of your bulletin. If you have any problems, just check it out and you'll be able to know what's going on with us. Contact information is there also. Now we will have our pastor's moment. Glory, glory to God, glory to God. For the Lord is good. He is worthy to be praised. Glory to God. We want to thank you, Sister Margaret, for those uplifting announcements. Amen. We just want to continue uh, to keep our sick in recovery. Amen. Keep them lifted up uh, in your prayers because we know and we understand the power of prayer, what prayer can do and will do. Amen. So just continue to lift all of the names up that you see on, on our bulletin that are in our, on our sick and recovery. Continue to pray um, for those families. Amen. Amen. We just thank the Lord to understand the power of prayer. Amen. So um, <clears throat> also we just want to share uh, with the family that we just completed uh, our nine-week lesson. And on our nine-week lesson in our Bible study, in our Tuesday and Thursday uh, Bible study, and we'll be moving uh, to a new series, amen. We'll be moving to a new, new series starting on Tuesday, amen. And we're going to look at uh, an, an, an area in, in all of our lives as believers, amen. We're going to be looking at what the Word of God is saying to all believers. We're going to be looking at it. And our nine-week series is going to be entitled Gr growing, growing Older and Wiser. Growing Older and Wiser. We're going to be looking at that as we continue to study God's Word. We're going, to, and, uh, we're going into the biblical record to see what it talks about as we grow and develop. Because our theme this year is moving into God's purpose and, and God's plan. Amen. So as we move towards God's purpose in our in His plan, we're going to be growing older and we're going to be growing wiser. Amen. So we want to look at that series. It's going to be a powerful, uh, powerful uh, nine-week series uh, beginning on this coming Tuesday. Our Bible study starts at 11 a.m. on Tuesday and 7 p.m. Amen. On Thursday. So we invite those that are uh, in our household of faith and those that are not. In the household of faith at church, you know, we invite you to this powerful nine-week uh, uh, lesson series on growing older and wiser. Amen. Also, continue to pray for all of the ministries here as we continue to do the work that the Lord has called us to do in the vineyard. We we are doing powerful and great work in our communities, but we we, we there's more to be done in the kingdom of God. Amen. So we just want to uh, encourage you to be a part of what we're doing here at Cherry Hill uh, United Methodist Church. So on this communion Sunday, we invite all those that are with us online and those who are, are with us here. Uh, we'll be uh, doing our communion Sunday. Amen. Glory, glory to God. Let's give God some praise. Amen. It's so good. It is so good to be here in the house of the Lord. Lifting up the marvelous name of Jesus the Christ. May God bless you and may heaven continue to smile upon you. Glory to God. Now we will have our invocation, our morning prayer by Brother Curtis Lawton. Good morning. Good morning. Y'all a little quiet. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Good morning. Uh, before I pray, I'm going to share a testimony. Um, me and Bernard, we got a uh, keyboard player we've been playing with for probably about two years. And he's going through um, some challenging times with his health. Yeah. yeah. And he was out for four months, maybe a year ago. Yeah. And then two months, he went back to the hospital. And Two weeks ago, the last story we got from him was that his kidney was failing, and he had um, pneumonia. <clears throat> pneumonia in his left arm. 
So we service this morning, and he was sitting behind the keyboard. Yes, yes, so I'm telling you right now, prayer works. And just believe in prayer. Believe in God. Don't give up. Because he could have gave up, but he didn't. And if some of us are here, we went through some trying times. Ms. Penny? A lot of us went through trying times. I just want to say, keep up, keep praying, keep moving on. Because it's, it's all about God. Don't make it about yourself, make it about God. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the miracles you give us every single day, Lord. Lord, we thank you for not holding it against us when we can't worship you, Lord. Lord, we want to thank you right now, Lord, just for giving us when we can't forgive ourselves, Lord. Lord, we want to thank you for that power that's going to steal in us right now, Lord. Lord, I'm asking right now you help us activate that power right now, Lord. Lord, I'm just asking that you just take us to the bosom of your arms right now, Lord. Lord, I'm asking that you hold us right now, Lord. Lord, a lot of us got mental problems. We got health problems, Lord. We got issues right now, Lord. But I'm giving it all over to you right now, Lord. Lord, we know we serve a, a God that can do all. Lord, we worship you last week. Well, hang it up with us right now, Lord. But Lord, we can tell you we still in the need of prayer right now, Lord. Lord, just touch us. Touch each and every family that's in here right now, Lord. Touch the love that couldn't make it. I pray that you reach out and touch the prisoners right now, Lord. Lord, touch our youth right now, Lord. You are being slain and slaughtered. But you said in Romans, even though we are slain and slaughtered all day long, as long as we believe in Jesus Christ, we will be more than conquerors right now, Lord. So Lord, I ask that you give us the power to be more than conquerors right now, Lord. I pray that you give us the power just to get up every single day and worship you right now, Lord. Lord, sometimes we get up well, I pray. Lord, we don't even give you the thankfulness that you deserve, Lord, but you don't hold that against us. And Lord, we love you for that. Lord, I love you for the simple fact that you gave me the opportunity to still be a father time and time and time again. Lord, I'm asking that you just touch us right now, Lord. Guide us right now, Lord. Lord, give us what we need so we can reach out to other people right now. Lord, we all walking around broken right now, Lord, but we know we serve a God that can fix whatever we're going through. Lord, fix problems, Lord, fix situations right now, Lord. Lord, even though we are in a trying time right now, Lord, Lord, give us the power to keep looking up to you right now, Lord. Lord, we take advantage of so many things that you have given us right now, Lord. Lord, I just want to just thank you for that right now, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity right now just to serve you every single day. Lord, Lord I thank you for the small burdens right now, Lord. I thank you for getting out of bed and rubbing at the left foot going in front of the right foot right now, Lord, because we... We can wake up and don't have that right now, Lord. We can wake up and have a different mindset right now, Lord. Lord, we don't even have to wake up right now, Lord. So, Lord, I thank you for that right now, Lord. I don't, don't hold it against you right now, Lord. Lord, we fall every single day, Lord. We got fires in our lives every single day, Lord. But you say, even though we go through the bag of the shadow of death, nothing will harm us right now, Lord. No weapons will prosper right now, Lord. Lord, just give us what we need right now, Lord. Give each other who's not about this church with the need right now. Lord, let us continue to be the beacon on the community right now, Lord. Let people continue to find hope in us right now, Lord. Lord, let us ask that you just guide us right now, Lord. Lord, you gave it to us right now, Lord. Allow us to maintain it right now, Lord. Give us the power that we need to maintain right now, Lord. Lord, you see you are the great I am right now, Lord. What do we need you right now, Lord? I want to ask all these wonderful and powerful blessings of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.
Psalm 133. Found in your Bible. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, sir. I'm going to be reading from the NRSV version. So you have found it in your Bible. You can say hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are all on one accord. A song of access. How very good and pleasant it is when kingdom live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head running down upon the beard, and on the beard of Aaron, running down over the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord ordained his blessing, life forevermore. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Now we will be reading from the New Testament. And then please stand for the reading of the New Testament. New Testament reading will be coming from Luke, the fifth chapter, verses four through six. Please say hallelujah when you found it in your Bible. Hallelujah. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your net for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet, if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. May the Lord add a blessing to the people. Amen. 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 Glory, glory to God. 
the revelation and the confirmation. Here's our pastor.
and fill my soul with faith, goodness, and power. Father, I ask that you speak to me, that I may speak for you. Speak through me that I may speak to those who wait to hear your word. But most of all, Lord, Lord, I ask that you heal someone, save someone, deliver someone, and encourage the body of Christ to let us know that this is the acceptable year of our Lord and our Redeemer. Let the people of God say amen. amen. My brothers and my sisters, this morning, I've been preaching and teaching this whole first quarter of 2024 from the theme, moving in God's plan and God's purpose in the kingdom of God. Hopefully, my brothers and my sisters, we've come to a place where we can honestly and wholeheartedly believe that God is moving us yes. in his plan, moving us in his purpose, in this journey called life. And I know that there are at least a few who can testify with me on a personal basis, if you will, as God is moving, that God is moving. God is, has given us the power and the authority to move in the kingdom of God. Amen. God has given us revelation. He's given us revelation because he wants to give us confirmation. Has been pouring into us. He, he's been pouring into us uh, with some revelation, and somebody has been receiving some res revelation uh, this year. In other words, uh, God has exposed us Amen. to His Word and His promise. Somebody ought to say thank you. Oh, yes, He has. Yes, He has. But in order to give us confirmation, uh, it's give us some approval about the revelation that he's given us, that means that we have to go through uh -huh. something. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That means that we're just not going to sit there and receive some revelation from God. We're not going to sit there and receive some power from on high. We're not going to sit there and receive a spiritual foundation and not understand that God has given us a purpose and a plan. That means sometimes that some situations are going to have to change in our lives. See, the Bible, the Bible reminds us as believers, some revelations that Jesus gave his disciples oh, was in Mark 16 chapter. He gave them some revelations. He gave them some revelation in verses 15 through 18. Oh, see, in Mark, the Bible reminds, us, reminds the reader that God has given us power. He's given us power over demonic spirits. Power to lay hands on the sick and, and see healing take place. He's given us this kind of power, my brothers and my sisters. Oh, he's given us power in using his name to cast out demons and, and to say these signs will be accompanied by those who believe. Oh, that's powerful, church. That's powerful, but we must remember that this power and this authority is not just a blank check given to us to use as we are pleased. Somebody needs to hear that. God loved us too much to just give us a blank check and we can do whatever we want to do with it. The Holy Spirit, which is the power, is given to us and worked through us to demonstrate and to confirm the truth of the gospel so that people will 
people know and believe that Jesus is Savior. Yeah, it is not for our benefit, but it's for God's benefit. So that when folks see us, when folks see us move in the power that he's given us, that will be confirmation that God is working with, through, and around each and every one of us. Tap somebody and say, it's in me. It's in me. And I don't know about you, but that's good news. That's good news knowing that his word, that revelation from God will not come back void. Oh, what are you saying, Pastor? What I'm saying is this. When he gives us this, when he gives us his word, it will never come back void. Oh, in fact, what I've uncovered and discovered, Brother Bernard, is that many times as believers, God gives us revelation through his word. But he becomes in, but we become impatient many times. Between the moment of revelation and the moment of confirmation. See, something happens when God gives us that. Something in the middle takes place. God gives us some revelation. He speaks to us. But something happens between the revelation and the confirmation. Oh, somebody needs to understand this. Somebody needs to understand that God is not playing. God wants to give us something so that we can do something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, see, when that revelation comes, it comes from on high, and it begins to flow, and when it flows through us, it works through us. Oh, God wants us to have it. Oh, God is not, he don't have time for us to be playing what he gave to us. Oh, this revelation that he's pouring into us is spiritual. Yes. It's spiritual. And he wants us to receive this. Why? Because when we receive this, we can move from that revelation and give us the confirmation to do what he's assigned us to do. Oh, brothers and my sisters here. Oh, this is a tough text. Oh, so much revelation here. In this text here. Oh. See, we, 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 we don't want to wait on God's confidence. We, we want it. We want it now. We want to try to change such a situation. But God says, just wait. I'll give it to you. And because I gave you the revelation. See, sometimes God gives us revelation uh, in three parts. He gives it to us in three parts. Why? Because he wants us to receive it. And when we receive it, he knows that we got it. And then he's able to confirm it. See, that, that's why David, that's why David said in, in, in Psalm 27, he said, I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. See, David understood that. He, and then and, and David said, wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take carriage. Then he says it again. He says, wait on the Lord. See, David understood that in the process of receiving this revelation from God, David understood that once he received this revelation from God, we have to wait. We, we, we got to wait on this thing. Uh, but many times it's hard. Tap somebody is telling it's hard sometimes. Yeah, it's hard sometimes. So we've been praying for such a long time for some things that God has given up for us. God has given us. But we got to wait. We got to wait. We got to wait for the Lord. David said, we got to wait on it. Oh, and then Isaiah. Isaiah picks it up in, in the chapter 40. Isaiah says this. But those who wait.
God has come. Listen, throughout scripture, we see many illustrations of miracles. And we see many illustrations of healing. And we see many, many uh, illustrations of deliverance of taking place instantaneously in the Bible. It happens like that. Instant. Instant. But we often fail and don't pay attention to what takes place between all the revelation and when we, we don't take we, we don't understand we don't take the time to look at what happened when, when God gives the revelation yeah. and then the confirmation the approval if you will somebody say approval and that's what I like about God he'll, he'll give it to you and then he'll approve it oh somebody's been approved last week I ain't talking about a long I ain't talking about John 2, John took, I mean, in, in John 2, Jesus turned water into wine. Instantly. In Mark 5, 21, Jairus' daughter, she was healed. Instantly. The man with the withered hand, you, you remember the fellow who was in the temple and he had a withered hand. Well, the Bible says that Jesus healed him. Oh, the, the man, you remember Father Mayor's father and Father Man. You remember him. Oh, the Bible says that he got his sight. Oh, the woman with the issue of blood. Oh, that was another thing. Oh, this woman with the issue of blood. Bible tells her that she suffered for 12 years and went through doctor after doctor. There was a long, something long. She, she didn't get it instantly. Oh, she had to wait 12 years. Somebody's still waiting. Oh, somebody's, been, somebody's still waiting. But I just come to remind you, just hold on. Oh, it's going away. Just hold on. Because God wants to pour into you. But just hold on. Just hold on. It was difficult for her. But it took what but God, oh, he, 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 he gave it to her through revelation and then he confirmed it with, why? Wow, because see, miracles, y'all, miracles seldom just pop up. Let me say that again. Miracles seldom just pop up. They're not done. They're not done just, just, to, just to entertain us. Those instant miracles, not done to just to entertain us. See, God has a revelation that he pours out. Oh, there's a plan. There's a purpose for it. See, Jesus was given revelation and he had a purpose and it was given to the promise because of the miracle. That miracle that took place in the wedding of Canaan. Yeah, when, when he turned the water into wine. That's God's revelation. And then he confirmed it. He confirmed it right there at the wedding. See, Jesus was given revelation and he had a purpose before before the miracle took place at your Irish daughter's spot. You remember the situation. He was on his way. He was on his way to see Jairus' daughter. But then the woman had the issue of love. See, he had, he, he, he had a purpose in a, in, a, in a play there. So whatever, whatever he had, because it was that faith. Somebody say faith. faith. Yeah, there's some things that take place between the revelation and the confirmation. There's going to be some time during that period of time. You're going to need some faith. Yeah. You're going to need some faith that's going to get you from revelation to confirmation. Yeah. There's going to be some faith. And this is where we often miss the boat, my beloved, because there may be a period of time where we must trust God. Somebody say trust. We got to trust God in between uh, revelation and confirmation. We got to trust him and know that he'll work out things on his time and in his way that he wants to work it out. All oh, that, uh, that can be tough sometimes. See, somebody knows what I'm talking about up here in this house. Somebody came this morning that truly believed that God is going to give them a miracle. Is there anybody here? No truly believe me. I'm a shadow of a devil. That's a miracle that you've been praying about. It's on the way. He's going to give it to you. Somebody came this morning knowing that he's going to give you the miracle. There's somebody here this morning that is in need of healing in their body. and to 
trust in those promises, church. Oh, but the question is, the question is, they believe in these promises and they trust in these promises. But the question is, what about the wait between the revelation and confirmation? What about the wait? We want those instant healings. We want those instant miracles. Thank you. 
never touched her before, Lord, and pour some revelation into her, oh God. And then when you confirm it, oh God, it won't be for her glory, Lord, but it'll be for your glory. Because it is you, God, who gave her revelation, gave her confirmation about that situation. Lord. So we thank you, God. We thank you for all those that are around in this sanctuary, God. We ask that you touch their hearts and touch their minds and touch their spirits, God. So that they'll have a closer walk with you, God. But most of all, God, we ask, God, that you touch someone, heal someone, deliver someone, God. And remind them that when that revelation comes, that you're calling them, Lord take action. So God, we thank you. We honor you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. God bless you.
hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection. You gave birth to your church. Deliver us from slavery to sin and death, and make with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is high, Christ is risen, Christ is alone, Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. We want to ask you, as, you prepare, as we prepare uh, to take over, we want to ask that you would just stand uh, on your feet. If those who have not received the elements, if you have not received the elements, be so kind to raise your hand and let us know, and one of the ushers will be there to serve you. Those who are with us online, feel free to take part in this communion, amen. Glory to God. We will be taking this together. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it. And he told his disciples, this is my body which is broken for you and for men. Take, eat, all of it, and do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper was over, he took the cup, and he blessed it. And he said, this is the blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. He said, take, drink of it, all of it, and do this in remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for what we have received from on high today, O oh God. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you, Lord, for how you 
Keep on blessing us over and over and over again, Lord. And for that, we say thank you. Thank you. Lord, we ask as we prepare to go down from this place, Lord, but never from your presence. We ask that you be with us through the good times and through, through the not so good times, Lord. We know that you're there with us. And for that, we say thank you. Lord, we ask that you bless us and we will be blessed. Keep us and we shall be kept. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly beyond all that we may ask, think, or imagine. To God be the glory to the church and to all generations forever and ever. Let the people of God say amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen. Go in peace, my brothers and my sisters, and the peace of the Lord be with you.